Buddy, it's the summer of Kool-Aid on the Pride of Detroit POD cast. Pride of Detroit.com, Pride of Detroit on Twitter, Pride of Detroit on Facebook. You are, you know where to find us. Excuse me, I'm coming off another overnight shift. Live on twitch.tv slash Pride of Detroit. I am your very adequate host, Chris Perfett, at Chris Perfett on Twitter. Joining us, we are two manning it today. We're just duos today with uh, Jeremy Reisman, who's played more than enough Fortnite at Detroit Online. I don't, uh, what's the name of the place? Tomato Town? We're going to get, doesn't exist anymore. Do you still have slurp juices? So I can't use multiple slurp juices on a single ape. Okay. Uh, apparently Jeremy's muted. Hold on. On stream. We got to fix that real quick. Anyway, very carefully. Uh, welcome, as always, to another Pride of Detroit POV cast. Uh, me and Jeremy here. Obviously, Ryan is out um, helping the kids for the children. He's doing it for the children. So we are here. We're going to we've got to talk uh, a lot about rookie minicamp coming up here in just a second. We've got schedule. We've got a game to play with the schedule. We're still not done with the schedule. I was hoping to get Ryan's thoughts on here, but me and Jeremy are going to rebound and do more with the schedule in a game we're calling Watch a Win of Whatever Ability. Beautifully and, named. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I come up with the best names. It's, it's what I do. It's what I do, Jeremy, to win every day. I win at making names. You, you have Over, the best words. The be- Just the best. Just the best, <laughs> folks. But let's start with rookie minicamp because the, ro- the Lions held their rookie minicamp over the weekend. Uh, we've got a lot of notes. How, how much were you there, Jeremy? Let the people know how much yeah. your exposure was. So it's a, it's a, it's a three day event, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. They only let the media in for Saturday. Um, so we got Dan Campbell at the beginning of the day, got about 90 minutes of, of the, it, we got the entire practice, which was, about 90 minutes. uh, and then we got to talk to, which I thought was really interesting. We got to talk to every single draft pick. Um, they came off the field and we got individually, uh, got to individually talk to them and, uh, yeah, it was an interesting day. Uh, they, they aren't with the veterans. I think that's important, par- important to point out. Um, it was just a rookie mini camp today. Actually, Monday, Hence the name. Yeah. Monday when we were recording, this is actually the first time that the rookies and the veterans are getting together for off season w- workouts. Again, it's still not, it's still not even OTAs, which is, you know, a it's, lot of it's, it's voluntary stuff. workouts, correct? Everything is voluntary at this point, but, um, you know, one of, one of the kind of cool things that happened today, we don't have to get too much into it, but it's it's an exciting No, it's step. big news. It's very big news. Jeff Okuda was out there on the field, and, and we weren't there, so I can't tell you how much he was participating, but there was a photo gallery that the Lions put up, and he's out there catching passes. It didn't look like he there were any pictures of him running, so I would suspect he's not a full go, but the fact that he's even out there working out with, with his teammates is, is obviously a big step in his uh, rehab. No, I think, and again, for a case like Okuda, I think it's fantastic. I know that was a big question mark over the offseason is what what is what are the Lions going to get in a healthy Okuda? Again, obviously, we're still a ways away from that now, but we know how big Jeremy a, uh, Achilles' injury is for a corner. To see him back there right now is very exciting. Yeah, it's so, promising. I mean, all, all of the updates he's been given on his social media indicate that he's moving pretty good at this point. Um, change of direction, he's shown that almost full speed. We we've kind of seen that. So if I had to guess, I would expect him to be fully ready by training camp in what, two months, two and a half months. Uh, so that that's the good news. Uh, the bad news is we, we don't know what he's going to look like. And, and I mean, <laughs> like there's a difference between being, you know, physically able to move in football shape and, and football ready and, and all that sort of stuff. But we know Jeff Okuda is the, the, is mentally where he needs to be. And, he's just the kind of person that, that I think can take on an Achilles rehab head on and, and, and potentially beat odds, at least in terms of where he'll be physically. I think there's still a lot. He has to grow as a, as a football player though. Right. Especially with some of the attention he's gotten, I think a little unfairly from fans and parts of the media of the Detroit media about like, again, it keeps going back to where he was drafted how he performed in his rookie year. We have to remain, remind, remind people all the time, like corners in rookie years yeah. don't do well. I don't know of many corners who just jump right in. Um, as, as much as you can talk about, well, you should at, at three or whatever, but that doesn't matter. 
It doesn't matter. And the Achilles is a big injury. We've got to work with what is in the moment here and now rather than just being mad that past expectations were not met in a single year with a guy who didn't know how to run a defensive system. But uh, next week, I think we have OTAs. So yes. it'll be close to full practice, still no contact, still no shoulder pads. So we'll, so we'll still um, get some notes out of that. I know you, Jeremy, this is your time of the year. You love OTAs. Yes. You love training. You love, you love, uh, <clears throat> you, so this is funny because this is funny about you because you always complained about the underwear Olympics of the combine. Yes. But then you like the underwear Olympics of OTAs. It's not underwear Olympics. They're actually in football formations. They're actually doing football things. And listen, th- this, no is pads. Go- this is going to sound very selfish and completely, if, if I'm being... Oh, it's, it's totally it selfish. Is. You get to cover it. Yeah. yeah. Part of it, part of the reason I love it is the exclusivity of it and the fact that I get to see it and no one else does. <laughs> like, I get God to see damn these guys elitist. Play. I get to, like... I know training. I, I like when training camp there and there's an audience and, and people get all excited and stuff, but there's something neat. And it, it's just something that I, I need to step back and every now and then and, and appreciate the job that I have, that I get to see a lot of things that most people aren't privy to. So it'll be fun to see during OTAs. They'll have the whole team out there. We'll, we'll kind of have a better idea of what the, the depth chart will look like. Uh, again, we only get one OTA practice per week that's available to the public. So I think they usually run three a week. We'll only get one of those. There's also a mandatory mini camp coming in, in about two or three weeks. We get all three days of those and that's mandatory. So we'll, we'll definitely have the whole team there. Um, so yeah, I, I'm, I'm excited for that sort of stuff because it is our first look at like a real true kind of a uh, depth chart. And we'll get to see what these, you know, what the new defensive look looks like. I mean, we've been promised all off season really that this offense is also going to look a lot different. Um, I think it was Amon Ra who said a, a week ago, there's not a lot of carryover from, from last year's offense. And no, and a lot of that's because like completely new offensive system. And, sure. you know, we're, we're getting, we're getting, you know, well, I, I don't know how much we'll see of Ben Johnson's, you know, ideas out of the gate, obviously, right. but you know, we'll it's some things close to the vest, but we'll, right. We'll get but to see don't, how, I, how, a yeah. little bit of how creative he is. And, and, and Dan Campbell also mentioned more tempo, which everyone like, that is like, oh cat, my god, it's the word, it's fans. the word, it's the word tempo, catnip for fans is like, oh, we're gonna be, but it, but in reality, like, that was something the line sucked at last year. They were getting out of their, their huddle with like nine seconds left in the play clock and having to hurry up. And they, they took the second most delay of game penalties. They took, uh, they were the, I think it was the fourth slowest offense in terms of when they snapped the ball, um, with, th- with the play clock left. So, that is something that I think is actually worth pointing out. And if they follow through with it and are a little bit quicker to the line, I think, I think we're going to see some improvement, especially maybe in some of those late down situations, which you, you get all, you get all that. I'm going to be outside with the unwashed and clearly the people who will not like be able to advance their careers doing any of this stuff. So you, you keep and you be part of the wine and cheese elitist. And I'll be out here just being like, yeah, that looks cool. Damn straight. Uh, Rookie mini camp itself though. I think the big story coming out, of rookie minicamp and the one we've kind of harped on a lot. And I think part of that's because we're doing the thing where uh, we like talking about this guy a lot. And he's obviously big, the, been the most exciting unknown quantity for the lions is James Houston. And I think a part of that is because where the lions are playing, are playing him considering that he was both a linebacker at Florida and an edge at at Jackson state. Yep. So I think right now they are, they're playing him at a very newish position, Jeremy. Yeah. It, it's so he's, he's repping and, and doing individual drills with the linebackers. It's, it's clear. The lines don't view this guy as a pure edge like Jackson state did. You know, Dion had that conversation with, uh, with Houston and told him like, listen, if you would, you, if you were going to be a linebacker, you would have been one in, in Florida. It didn't work out. We're moving you to edge. Looks like the Lions are giving him a second chance at linebacker, but he did line up on the edge a couple times, and it does seem like there's going, you know, again, we're we're talking about all these new four-man fronts, maybe kind of a 4-2 base instead of a 4-3 base. Um, And and even if you look at the Lions roster, they, they delineate between linebacker and outside linebacker. An outside linebacker last year meant edge defender. Outside linebacker this year, I'm not sure means edge defender. I think it means off-ball linebacker who will occasionally work on the edge. And that's what I think is is 
headed for for James Houston. I think we might see someone like Julian O'Quara move to that role because we saw him drop in coverage a couple times. And so James Houston to me is kind of this hybrid guy that that they're looking at, that they're kind of forming a new position. I don't know if it's going to be a base position. I don't know if it's going to be a sub package position, but it's something that they're they're clearly molding players for because uh, Natras Patrick, the the guy that they signed from rookie minicamp. Uh, who was there on a tryout, a uh, former Georgia linebacker who spent a couple years with the Rams, which is why, obviously, um, Brad Holmes knows him quite well. Um, he was he was probably instrumental in signing him as an undrafted rookie in 2019. Same same position. Um, and so I think I think Natrez, and, and if I'm not pronouncing his name wrong, I'm sorry, um, I think he's going to be in direct competition with James Houston for this role. And um, Patrick – had a, has a ton of special teams experience. So that's again, going to kind of put him maybe a leg up on James Houston right away. Um, but James Houston has already said he's going to devote all of his energy to being a special teams guy as well. So kind of an interesting, uh, development in terms of defensive scheme, interesting development in terms of James Houston's kind of role going forward. Um, because I think a lot of us, especially after the podcast that we just had, if you haven't listened to that, by the way, go back and listen to it because, uh, Really, really interesting and, and, and positive about James Houston, but it was mostly about him as an edge defender. And so um, I think I think maybe that's not where, where he's headed in Detroit. Maybe, maybe it's like a sub-package pass rusher type of role, but I think in general they are going to try to utilize some of that athleticism he has in coverage um, because that's mainly what he was doing on Saturday. He almost picked off a pass too, which was pretty cool, and you can actually watch that clip on, on Twitter. Yeah. Fascinating that Natrez Patrick is at um, rookie minicamp, even though he's got about three years in the league right now too. But I mean, obviously probably there's probably something that allows that to happen. Yep. Probably something that, you know, just, just for the competition. Um, more stories out of minicamp chase Lucas. They're playing him at nickel. So I don't know if he's going to, uh, I guess the question is, will he contend for that starting job? is A.J. Parker set in stone. Now, I thought A.J. Parker did very well last year. I think when you're of a background like A.J. Parker, you're always up for risk. I know people cheer for the late-round UDFA signings a lot, but that position has a lot of – I mean, when you are of that background coming into lead, it has a lot of turnover. However, in the case of something like Nickel Corner, that ex, I mean, that year of we, – we, we just talked about with Okuda, like – Corners take time to develop into the league and Parker has that experience on his side looking at this, but obviously chase Lucas, the new shiny thing. Um, where do you really see him? Do you think he takes over that job from AJ Parker at nickel or are they just like trying him out there? Because obviously they'll probably want some flexibility and maybe, you know, I, I don't know if they want to rotate the nickel corner or, you know, they just want to, or if they're just trying to find out what they have in chase Lucas, where he can play best uh, in the, defensive coverage i i do think that's his best fit and in in our first bite it seemed like the the guy we talked to also believed that that was his best fit as nickel but yeah the question is whether that job is up for grabs or not and i i think it's kind of up for grabs like i know i know we all like the story of aj parker but when you look at it i don't know he I, he wasn't he was well above expectation because like you said rookie rookie corners in general have a really tough job an undrafted rookie corner starting right away is it's even doubly scary. the tough job. And listen, right. Chase Lucas is a seventh round pick. He's he's as close to a UDFA as, as you can possibly get. It's not like he's much better, but he is a lot more athletic, a lot more athletic. And so and 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 he's been like he's a what five he played five years in college. So it it may seem like he's not very you know he's new, but he's he's older than AJ Parker. He's older than half of the the cornerback room. So you, I saw a lot of leadership out there. Like he was kind of leading the way and, and pumping guys up there and rookie minicamp. So I honestly think he has a legitimate shot to, to if not win the nickel job, be the primary backup at nickel. And so I initially had him on the outside looking in after rookie minicamp. I think, I think he might be on the 53 man ro roster and even have a shot at a, at a starting job. Going down the notes here. Um, one that we don't, I know we don't have this in the notes, but I, I was noticing this earlier. A um, lot of shots of Jamison William from rookie mini camp. A lot of him smiling. Sure. Yeah. Lions really making sure that they get the uh, smiles in there. I think that whole story is just completely overblown. I just, I just uh, find, <laughs> I, 
I find maybe he just doesn't like doing interviews, you know, I, but no, I, I don't even think that's true, honestly, because his, yeah. his on-field interview after practice was fantastic. He was great. Okay. I, I then he just, I he just, just, we just cut, like, he was just, he yeah. had to, like, yeah. he was in Vegas. I, I can't believe this is still a story. We're, it's three weeks later and we're still, I still have to, I still catch it from Lions fans sometimes. Like, did you see how he looks? I just don't think he likes playing in a try. It's like, they don't think like that. Like I, I know in the past, like, I know we just mentioned James Houston and I know guys like Deion Sanders, when they came out of college, they cared about where, what team they would get on because I think part of that was they were making less money. It was a lot about the prestige of where they were playing and what that meant for their aspirations. These guys get so much money coming out of college, I think, and don't mind coming to the underdogs. Like this idea that, that JMO does like was unhappy to go to Detroit is just, it's I, I don't know when it dies, Jeremy. I just, I, I don't know how it dies. Cause once you know this, once you get, It'll once you get a we stop talking about it honestly maybe maybe <laughs> but like people keep bringing it up once you get a seed in the minds of some detroit fans it stays there yeah. but i mean i what what do you think of him because like we are we're in this you know i we were talking about the schedule on our schedule release party and like we kept talking about when is jmo going to be ready on the field now obviously this is no pads but how much was he really performing out there nothing he was basically doing nothing he was standing on the sidelines the I think the cool story about it was um, he always, like he has a football in his hand 24 <laughs> seven when he's in that facility. He's, he's literally got a football in his hands. They also gave him a script of the plays that they're going to be running during rookie minicamp. So he's following like he's, he's mentally there going through the reps. Um, and so that's, that's kind of the, the, the step that he's at. There was also a moment where Dan Campbell was just throwing in passes like he and Dan Campbell, by the way, horrible quarterback. Don't like <laughs> hey, he's a tight end. He, he was, you could tell he played tight end. <laughs> the way I put it is he looked like an actor quarterback who just like, what? just did not know how to throw the ball, but like he can act. So they, they have him playing, you know. Yeah. In, in like the, in like the, in like the Kurt Warner doc, he's yeah, playing the quarterback like, for the opposing team or right, something, something like, like that. <laughs> um, but yeah, no. where, where was Mark? Get Mark to throw some passes out here. <laughs> Um, but yeah, that's Jim. Jim, I don't know when he's going to be ready, but they're they're definitely taking it slow with him. And and he, I do, I do like that you are enamored with him holding a football, the thing that every like you know, bungo like radio host does, where they just like have a football in their hands, tosses it up. So Jamo's Jamo's on that level. Yes, he's he's very excited. Uh, very excited. All right, what else do we have here? Um, Kirby Joseph, I think you you wrote down that we're I you guys see him he's playing a lot closer to the line than expected. I know he played a lot of deep single high at Illinois. Yeah, that that was a big concern of mine is that he was mostly a single high safety at Illinois because he's he's super rangy, he's super fast. And so my concern was like, can he do anything else but be kind of a deep middle guy? And it's very clear either the lines were concerned about that same thing and they want to get him some reps near the line of scrimmage or um, they they think he's just more versatile than that and, and um, are, are, are acting or are, are putting in there. Um, it, it's interesting because I think, I think, you know, obviously the long-term plan is, is to pair him with Tracy Walker. I don't know if he takes a job right away or not. Tracy's a guy who can definitely do both. I think he's better when he's kind of a rangy guy, which means that Kirby Joseph is going to have to take on some of those closer to the line of scrimmage stuff. But in general, um, I, I, I don't know. I, I'm, I'm curious as to where that, go, that goes with Kirby Joseph, especially once He's with the veterans um, to see if, 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 if it's more balanced, if they want him to play closer to the line of scrimmage. Obviously, the Lions would like these guys to be as versatile as possible. All right. We got a couple more standouts to really talk about here, and then we're going to go on to talking some schedules. So um, Greg Bell uh, shook both rookie linebackers on a play. Uh, yeah, a separate play. So they were running this drill. It, it was run by um, – a special teams coordinator, Dave Phipp. So I guess it was kind of a special teams. Basically two guys are, are standing at opposite ends of like, I don't know, a, a 10 yard wide, 10 yard deep square part of the field. And they're running at, cor- running at each other from the opposite corners. Greg Bell has the football in his hand. The other guy um, in, in this case, both of the rookie linebackers draft the drafted one. So James Houston and Malcolm Rodriguez um, are, are essentially trying to tackle him. And I put tackle in quotes here because it's essentially two hand touch right now. And Greg Bell shook the crap out of both of them. And it's interesting. So Greg Bell, if, if you don't know, is one of the UDFAs out of San Diego state. 
um, five five ten two ten, two oh one. Uh, I I don't know how much of a chance he has to make the team because I do think the running back room is pretty it's tight. Pretty well there. set. It's pretty well set. Like they're gonna run a full back and like I think they've got three deep, pretty well set. I mean, yeah, I guess it's tough because you definitely have Jamal Williams. You definitely have uh, uh, Swift. Swift. The Swift. Uh, beyond that, Jamar Jefferson didn't get a lot of playing time. Craig Reynolds is a great story, but is he is he truly a number three? But I think I feel like Godwin Jefferson Nicole like. BK. Jefferson was doing all right and he got like hurt last year. So I, I don't know if they'll try to run it back with him or if the injury will just put him behind that eight ball. But I, I just don't know if any of those three guys are irreplaceable. That that's right. That's how I feel. So if Greg that's Bell, fair. Greg Bell's on the team, right? He wasn't just a tryout guy. So um, he'll, he'll get his opportunity to win. And and I think it's, it's possible he does, but he's, he's got a long ways to go. He's, he was the only running back there too. So maybe just by proxy, he stood out. Yeah. Well, I mean, sizzle early is good. Uh, one more guy who I had kind of highlighted that uh, I, I was, I, I'm fascinated if he'll be even able to make the roster. It's, it's, we've talked so much about how, how stacked, I mean, not stacked, but you, you know what I'm talking about, how competitive that yeah. wide receiver room is right now. Khalil Pimpleton, I thought made some really good plays, uh, ran some very good routes for, for uh, the rookie, for the rookie mini camp, but I don't really see his way to the roster. I, I see him much more. And this is me trying to give some love to the uh, central Michigan sure. contingent of our fans fire up chips. Cause they're always make themselves known, but Pimpleton, I feel like it, it feels like no matter what he's destined for the practice squad. I think he's a great UDFA pickup for the lions. He could probably use some more seasoning on the practice squad. I don't know if he really cracks this roster. I, I think he'd have to do something like, the throne Khalif Raymond or one of these other guys who's on the bottom, but also have proven, you know, their value with special teams as well. I don't like, do what, 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 what percent chance do you give Pimpleton to make the roster? Uh, like 10. I don't know. He, to me, he has training camp, darling written all over. Like there's always, Oh, a, sure. There's are always <laughs> central a, Michigan it, plus everything else. All, right. And it always seems to be a wide receiver, right? There's always a wide receiver that everyone falls in love with in training camp. The thing with this guy is he's tiny. I am essentially this guy's size. He's five, eight. Let me look exactly what they he's have. Still like, taller than me. Five, eight, one seventy two. That, that is hmm. literally about what I weigh right now and, and how tall I am. It's not. And, and he's built, right? Like, um, he, he's in good shape. I, I'm not necessarily. So, so he's, he's tiny, but I mean, the like, even the lines, Twitter is pimping out this guy. They showed a couple clips of him. One of him just absolutely shaking a guy in, in a comeback route. Um, one, just a crossing route. And I think it was the one that we saw on Saturday where he created at least three, four yards of separation and, and gained 20 plus yards. So, um, kind of a shifty guy. And I think you're right. Like, I think Khalif Raymond is the, like, if he's going to win a roster spot, he's going to have to beat up Khalif Raymond and the Lions like Khalif Raymond a heck of a lot. He's going to, they have to do. Be a and returner. they like give it, he's they gave him some to, money too. Yeah. Yeah. They, they paid him. And so I think he's a Khalif Raymond backup, which means he could push someone like Tom Kennedy off the practice squad roster. I think that's where he's headed. Um, ultimately, but it should be fun because I mean, the other thing here is the lines don't really have a set returner, right. That they, that they can trust. Um, I, I think Pimpleton only has experience with punt returns, but I, I would be very surprised if they didn't give him some kick return looks to see if he can do that. 